Hi, I'm Biv Wadden, and welcome to this introduction on how to form a perfect grip. I'm holding the best-selling instructional golf book of all time. It's titled Five Lessons, The Modern Fundamentals of Golf. It was written by Ben Hogan, and he began the first sentence of the first chapter in all caps with the phrase, Good golf begins with a good grip. Hogan was absolutely right about this. The grip is so important to the proper functioning of the golf swing that I've created a three-part video series that covers every detail necessary so that you can learn to form a perfect grip every time. During the course of these videos, I'll explain why a good grip is essential to a consistent and powerful release, the specific role each hand plays in the golf swing, and how the grip affects the ability of the shaft to stay on a consistent plane angle throughout the swing. I'll also give you some very precise checks for proper joint and knuckle alignment so that you can on your own confirm that your grip is in fact correct, as well as introduce some important new phrases into your golf vocabulary, such as keeping your left hand on the forearm and building the rectangle. If you're a beginning golfer, a good grip should be learned as soon as possible. That's why I featured this three-part series as the lead set of videos right at the top of the menu bar of my instruction vault on the website. Even if you're an advanced player, I still recommend that you watch this grip series. I often catch low handicap golfers making very subtle grip errors, but once they're fixed, we both see a dramatic improvement in the consistency of their ball striking. Chances are, previous, via previous instruction, you've already learned about the three different grips that golfers use to swing a club. But as a reminder, I'll take you through each of these three. The first is called the interlocking grip, where the left index finger is lifted off the grip, and it's interlocked with the pinky of the right hand. The second grip is referred to as the overlapping grip, or the Varden grip, where the left index finger stays in the grip and the right pinky wraps around the ledge of the left index finger. The third is referred to as the ten finger grip, or the baseball grip, and in this grip all ten fingers hold on to the club without any interlock or overlap. Now, some instructors may suggest just go ahead and pick the grip that feels the most comfortable. I don't agree with this and over the years have developed a very strong belief that the overlap grip is the best choice among these three grips. I recently went onto YouTube and cataloged the grips of the top 50 players in the world. Nearly 80% use an overlapping grip. The remaining 20% use an interlock grip, and there is no one I'm aware of on any tour who uses a 10-finger grip. But it's also true that the two greatest players of all time, Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods, both use the interlocking grip. So it's of course possible to play tremendous golf with, with an interlock grip, and their success has definitely popularized the interlock in the last couple of years, particularly among uh, competitive juniors. Yet the majority of the top 50 players in the world still choose the overlap. Why is that? Well, in my opinion, it's because the overlap grip is biomechanically superior to the interlock. With the interlock, the left index finger is taken off the club to make room for the right pinky. And this leaves the two fingers, the left index finger and the right pinky, both off the grip and only loosely working together. With the overlap, all four fingers of the left hand are solidly on the club. The right pinky hooks itself into the ledge formed by these first two fingers of the left hand. And both fingers now have a strong connection to both the grip and to each other. This makes it easier to get the right wrist hinging and setting earlier in the backswing and also holding the angle of that right wrist longer into the downswing. Now, another practical problem with the interlock is that it's just too easy for a beginning golfer to mess up. More often than not, when the left index finger is taken off the grip to make room for the 
the pinky of the right hand. The fingers in the left hand can become angled and form what I call a, a, a sissy fist. The right pinky is typically stretched too far underneath the grip, causing the right wrist to fall and losing this concept of building the rectangle in the right hand. And you'll hear more about the phrase of sissy fist and building the rectangle in the upcoming videos that you'll watch on the left hand and right hand grips. Now, if you're saying to yourself, Biv, I'm not a tour pro, I'm just a beginner. Why do I need to be so focused uh, on the grip? This makes it all the more important that you get the grip right because once you get both hands correctly on the club, you'll immediately feel how repeatable the hinging and unhinging of the wrists can be and you'll deliver the club face squarely to the ball the same way every time just like the tour pros do. Before you click ahead to the next video on the left hand grip, I want to emphasize that my students are very successful learning how to form a proper grip quickly. A good grip feels good right away, so if you make a grip change based on my discussions in these videos and it, it doesn't feel right, something's definitely wrong. And if this happens and you feel stuck, come see me and I'll get things squared away for you. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of this very important series on the grip.